What's up guys, Yale Greenfield, AKA The Live King. I'm back here in LA, it's great to be back, and I'm back at the Bicycle Casino, which is where I punished, in part, the last time I was here. So I am looking today to get that punish going again, do a little bit of work. There is a 5-10-20 game running, which I'm gonna sit. We'll see how it goes, but it's good to be back in LA, beautiful here as always. Gonna get in some good eating, but uh, today we gotta focus on a W at the bike. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to focus on getting this win at the bike today, and I will catch up with you guys later and let you know how it's going. We got a little 5, 10, 20, no limit Texas Hold'em here in Los Angeles. And in this very first hand, we peel two kings in the straddle. The small blind completes the 20, the big blind completes the 20, and naturally with our two kings, we're gonna kick it up $115 to go with the second best hand in poker. Small blind calls and the big blind gets out of the way and folds. Flop comes down 10, 6, 2 with two hearts. We do not have a heart in our hand. And when the small blind checks it over to us, this is a slam dunk continuation bet. I go with $145. Small blind puts in the call and we'll be looking for a clean turn to continue betting. The turn is a jack of hearts though, that is not a clean turn. And so the small blind checks to us, I feel like checking is gonna be best here. We get a good river though, it's a five. So the five doesn't really change anything at all here. Small blind checks again, showing weakness. 280. And I put out the value bet. He does put in the call, we show our kings, and he mucks. So likely he was bluff catching us with a 10 there. A good start to the day. I peel ace queen offsuit in the cutoff, and the low jack is open to $75 here. Now, I'm not the kind of guy that likes to play a lot of calls. I like to be aggressive, put the punish on my opponents. I make it $240 to go, and it folds back to the low jack. Now, note the low jack is the same opponent that we defeated in the first hand with our pocket kings. He puts in the call, and we're off to a flop heads up. Flop comes down, jack 10, seven, two clubs. He checks it over to us quickly. So we have a gut shot straight draw, two overs, and we have the ace of clubs on our hand. But the thing is, is this board hits him harder than it hits us. So I'm gonna go ahead and check back and look at a turn. The turn is an ace, so now we have top pair, queen kicker, and we still have that gut shot straight draw. The villain bets $200. So this feels like a pretty good outcome because the board was very dangerous on the flop, felt like it was a good flop for him, and now we've turned top pair and a draw, so this is an easy call. River's a king, we complete the straight, so we get very lucky. We go runner runner to the straight, and the low jack goes deep into the tank here. And I sort of feel like when he goes deep into the tank, if he chooses to not bet, he might be annoyed. Like maybe he had a really good hand, like jack 10, 10, 10, jack, jack, 7, 7. So when he checks it over to us, these are the hands that I want to target. I'm just trying to think of the perfect bet size here. 450. I go with $450. He puts in the call, gets the bad news, runner runner straight for us, and we take him to value town two times. Third night's free, man. Let me set the scene for you here a little bit. We now have two Spanish pros at our table. They sat down at the same exact time and each bought in for $11,000. Spaniard one in cutoff opens to $75. Spaniard two calls the button. We've got two kings in the big blind. We make it $380 to go. Great. Spaniard one announces raise. He wants to play for more, $1,000 total. Spaniard two folds the button and now it's back on us. So I think the options here are all in or to play a call and just proceed in this exact spot, I'm typically gonna play calls. So when I'm considering my options, I'm leaning that way. I do go ahead and put in the call. 
At this point, both of us are representing extremely strong hands, and we need some YouTube heat to win this one. So please hit that subscribe button to help me hit this flop. And when the flop comes down, King 7-2, top set for us. It's the one time I'm actually hoping the opponent might have pocket aces, because that's how we're gonna get paid here. So I check it over to the pre-flop for better. He bets $525 into 2100. And I like his size, I like his bet. I think it's a very good play. Now again, I think my two options here are proceed with call or go all in. I don't really see anything in between. And on this disconnected King 7-2 texture, I think the best thing to do is probably just call. When we get a nine turn, I quickly check it over to our European opponent, and he goes pretty deep in the tank here. There's $1,940 behind. If he's got hands like ace, queen of hearts, he might want to bluff, hoping that I fold. If he's got a hand like ace, king, he could think about also going all in, maybe checking. I don't know, there's a lot of options here, but there isn't a ton of money behind. He does check it back, and we're off to a river. River pairs the seven, so we now have kings full. Again, it's really fun to be in one of those spots where you hope that your opponent has aces. So rare that you ever have pocket kings and you hope the opponent has aces. I think hands like queens and jacks are gonna have a really hard time calling a bet here. All in. We go rip city all in 1940, he snap calls. We show him top full and he shows us two aces. So he did not actually have the ace of hearts in hand. Extremely unlucky for him. But at the same time, this hand just sort of plays itself. If I was on his side, I would have lost in the same exact fashion he did. But it's a 7K pot for us. One of the biggest we've ever won in the history of this vlog. Live King! Straddle is officially off now. And we peel two aces, first to act, which is middle position at this table, and make it 35 to go. I feel you. You feel what I'm saying? I do feel what you're, you're saying. You picking up what I'm putting down, homie? Yes, I do. You and I, were kindred souls. <laughs> you, smell, you smell what the rock's cooking? I do smell what the rock's cooking. Low jack calls, high jack calls, and our man Frank the Tank in the big blind makes the call. Flop comes down king, queen, three, two diamonds. We do not have a diamond. And our buddy who we're chatting with, having a great time with him, Frank the Tank, leads $70. I think it's best to proceed with a call here. The low jack thinks calling's good as well, and so does the high jack. So all four of us are headed to the turn. And the turn is a nine of diamonds. So flushes have come in, and the main straight draw from the flop, jack 10. When Frank the Tank bets $210, I quickly fold. And you could say, well, Yale, you've got pocket aces. What are you thinking here? But my opinion is that these black aces have basically shriveled up and become just as good as seven deuce. The low jack does call Frank the Tank's bet and the high jack calls as well. So three of them head to this river. It's a stone brick, nothing has changed. Our buddy Frank the Tank checks, low jack checks, and high jack bets $925, a massive bet. Okay. Frank the tank folds. Lojack seems very disappointed here. Big sigh. Uh, his flush is good. Tells him his flush is good, and he was right. He pays it off. Nut diamonds. He turned two pair with his king nine. My fold with black aces seems pretty wise on the turn. We're up heaps six hours into the session here when we peel ace jack of hearts in middle position and make it 35 to go. The low jack is the lone caller here. He's kind of loose and generally all over the place. I'm not too sure what he's doing or what he's thinking in most hands. The flop is jack eight, six, two hearts. So we have top pair, top kicker, and the nut flush draw. We've got this board crippled. I go ahead and check. I'm gonna play a rope-a-dope strategy here. He bets $50 and we call. Turn is a deuce, changing absolutely nothing. I snap check. The opponent slides out $135. I think I need to stay with my rope-a-dope strategy here. I don't think raise is a very good option. I'm hoping that he's bluffing other heart draws. Maybe even he has an inferior jack and thinks I'm weak. We go ahead and call. The river's a 10, so 9-7 comes in. 
Jack-10 makes two pair. There's certainly some hands that beat us. I snap check. He bets 250, which looks really valuey, but I've got no choice. I put in the call. He shows 8-8 for a flop set. In a sense, I feel like we got kind of lucky here that we didn't get punished harder. The straddle is back on in this hand, and we peel 6-9 suited in cutoff. And this two-gapper isn't a great hand, but my adolescent self convinces me that I absolutely need to play it. I make it 65 to go. The button calls. And the straddle calls as well. So three of us to the flop here. Flop is queen nine nine rainbow, so we got trips, no kicker. And when the straddle checks to us, I decide to check also, because I like to play a monkey in the middle strategy here, where I check a lot when I'm in the middle of two opponents. The turn is a four of clubs. So club flush draws are now possible for the opponents, and the straddle leads 175 into 210. This is a really big bet. Facing this bet, I don't think I'm gonna have raises too frequently. I think calling is just best. We're setting the trap and hoping for a brick river. River is incredible, full house for us. So we open a hand we maybe should have never ever played and we now have a full house. Straddle checks it over to us. 475. Oh. I fire 475 into 560, he snaps and gets the bad news. We are so hot today, everything we're doing is working. We even opened the 9-6 suited, and look what we get. What's that? You know, you know I got the big leg? We've got 10-8 suited in hijack here, and make it $35 to go. The cutoff calls. Frank the Tank from New York. Frank the Tank from New York. All right, let's go, baby. All right, baby. Stop taking my money, all right? I took it down with a 6'9 boater. <laughs> <laughs> Cutoff calls, big blind calls, and it's three ways to the flop here. Flop comes down 10, 7, 6 rainbow, and again, we are monkey in the middle. So when it checks to us, I check, and it checks through. Turn is a deuce. We've had a lot of these today, a lot of clean turns, and when it checks to us, I go ahead and shoot a $70 bet out there. Cutoff calls and the big blind is gonna fold here. And on this river nine, we improve to a straight, but I think this is a really good card to check because I think it's better for our opponent. I gotta hope he bluffs at it. He does bet $125, I snap. No, I got a very good hand. I make a pair, I river eight. He doesn't show us our hand, but we fast roll him as he seems like he doesn't really want to show. So a straight for us and we continue to stay hot. You just leave him alone, man. You leave him alone. All right, guys, that's the end of the show here at the bike. And uh, man, that was fun. Like back at the bike again and I'm hitting hands and things just went my way today. It's really fun when that happens because like I've said before, it doesn't happen often and the game does play pretty big. So, you know, losing two or three grand, four or five grand in this game, it can happen very frequently. But the bike does seem to be quite lucky for me. I'm running very well here. Floors are great, environment's great. Uh, the Live with the Bike guys are really great guys. Guys like JJ and Wayne, everybody's really nice and really friendly here. I want to give a big shout out to the entertainment provided in this vlog for this episode. You've got me, but uh, we've also got Frank the Tank from New York. Frank was in there providing. He's got good energy at the table. He doesn't fuck around. He's got a real New York vibe, and I love New Yorkers. A lot of people think I'm from New York. I'm not. But anyway, that's really it. There isn't a lot to say. The game was good. The table was good. The action was good at the bike. We had fun. We ran hot, and that is what we're trying to do when we play. You know, we want to run hot, make some money, and we did that. Probably going to head to K-Town after this get some eaten in. Final recap on the numbers. We were in for 2000. We were out for 72.33. That's a profit of $5,233. We got them. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Really helps the channel. Me and my producer would really appreciate it. We're working so hard on these vlogs. We're having fun. So please smash that for me. Do me a favor. I'd be grateful for it. I will see you guys next time. Live King out.